Are you ready for the word of God? All right, let's get into it. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. It says, Paul was writing to Timothy and he said to Timothy, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. The word holy scriptures is the Greek word hagios graphe. The word hagios graphe means sacred writings or set apart writings. That from a child thou hast known the sacred writings or the set apart writings. And what Paul was implying to Timothy was that the scriptures are sacred in their application and in their usage. That's why it is called Hagios Graphe. So he says that the scriptures are not complicated. Even a child can know the scriptures. So from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. That the mission of the document called scripture is to bring you to a place of wisdom in the subject of salvation. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Paul speaking said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 talking about the mission statement of Jesus he said she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus why he shall save his people from their sins so the scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation the gospel is the power of God unto salvation Jesus came to save his people from their sins so salvation is a big subject of the scriptures so he says to timothy that from a child you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus now the word in christ jesus is a post resurrection reality you will never find that word from genesis to john the word in Christ only exists from Acts of the Apostles to Revelation because that word is a post resurrection reality so he says to timothy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus next verse he says to timothy all scripture the word all scripture is the greek word pasa graphe it means the entirety of the document called scripture is given by inspiration the word inspiration means the breath the breath of god so all scriptures are given by the breath of god and it is profitable number one for doctrine so he draws the borderline the borderline as to the areas where the scriptures profit us it is profitable number one for doctrine the word doctrine is the greek word that does kalia that does kalia means teaching or explanation that the scriptures are given to us to form the basis for our teaching for our explanation or for our doctrine number two for reproof the word reproof means evidence that the scripture forms the basis of our evidence number three for correction that the scriptures are given to us to correct us as you grow in knowledge and as you grow in grace you will begin to see things the way you never saw them before you must be flexible enough to allow the scriptures to correct you so the scriptures are given to correct us number four for instructions in righteousness not just instructions but instructions within the parameters of righteousness verse 17 why that the man of god may be perfect the word perfect there means matured what it means is that when a man of god is exposed to doctrine exposed to reproof exposed to correction exposed to instructions in righteousness he arrives at a place of perfection a place of maturity thoroughly furnished unto every good work can somebody shout amen like thunder in the book of john chapter 5 verse 39 jesus speaking to the jews said to them search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life but the scriptures don't give eternal life you think you have eternal life from the scriptures but the scriptures 
don't give eternal life rather they are they which testify of me or the scriptures are my testimony or the scriptures build up my evidence or the scriptures testify of me or i am the message of the scriptures or remove me from the scripture no more scripture the scriptures testify of me can somebody shout i hear you he said the scriptures testify of me or i am the message of the scriptures verse 40 but you will not come to me that you may have life the scriptures don't give life the scriptures are my testimony when you meet the scripture you must meet me i give life but the scriptures point to my person i don't know if i'm talking to somebody in the book of john jesus said i am the way i don't have the way jesus doesn't have the way you didn't hear what i said i said jesus doesn't have the way but jesus is the embodiment of the way when jesus enters your heart the way has entered who am i talking to in this building as your amen will come like thunder i prophesy you will never be confused you will never be confused somebody shout i receive revelation he said i am the way he says i am the truth truth is not what you learn in school truth is a person when you meet the person meeting this person called jesus is freedom you can't meet jesus and be looking for freedom no 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 you can't meet jesus and be looking for deliverance an encounter with christ is deliverance that's why in john chapter 8 he says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free then he said whom the son whom the son whom the son whom the son shall set free he is free indeed who is the son the son is the truth am i talking to somebody listen carefully there's a song we sing in church and i've been correcting some songs of of late because there are a number of songs that don't represent the scriptures properly. So we have to remove them from the shelf. As revelation increases, light increases, certain things have to change. Somebody shout, I hear you. The song says, he came from heaven to earth to show the way. He never came to show the way. If he came to show the way, then it means he's one of the prophets. But he's not one of the prophets. He didn't come to show the way. He came as the way. Who am I talking to in this building? Lift your hand, shout, I receive revelation. So he says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But the scriptures don't give eternal life. Rather, they are they which testify of me. In the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 25 When Jesus rose from the dead On the way to Emmaus He met two gentlemen Who were walking and discussing About his death and burial And Jesus said to them gentlemen What are you guys discussing They turned to Jesus and said Are you a stranger Have you not heard of Jesus They were preaching Jesus to Jesus But didn't know Jesus You can preach Jesus and never know Jesus You can be in church all your life and never know jesus am i talking to somebody here they were preaching jesus to jesus but didn't know jesus then after they finished their sermon jesus turned to them and said oh fools he called them fools it was not an insult it was a description of their status when a man doesn't know jesus he's a fool i didn't say that jesus said that he called them fools and the next thing he said is, and slow of a heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So for the first time, we are about to see the interpretation of the message of the prophets from the mouth of the message. Jesus is not the messenger of God. Jesus is not an errand boy for God. 
Jesus is God. Jesus is God who became a man to save man. Am I talking to somebody here? Without Jesus, there is no God. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know God. Because Jesus is God. In the book of John, it says, No man can come to the Father except by me. So, if you don't know Jesus, you don't know God. Then somewhere he said, I am my Father. I want. Then in another place, he says, He that has seen me has seen the Father. Can I talk to somebody here? In the prophecy, Isaiah said, His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Mighty God mighty god who is mighty god jesus everlasting father who is everlasting father jesus so a revelation of jesus is a revelation of god so he said to them you're fools and you're slow of heart to believe all that the prophets not all that prophets not all prophets all that the prophets a class of prophets talking about major prophets and minor prophets of the old testament all that the prophets have spoken all right next verse ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory that the message of all the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, Habakkuk, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, all that the prophets were trying to say was summarized in two sentences in the mouth of the message. Why did they write big, big books? Because they didn't have articulation. So because they lacked articulation, they used description. And when you are describing, you use more words than when you articulate can i talk to somebody here so now jesus the message himself for the first time is bringing out what they were trying to say about him that they could not articulate because of their spiritual state because all the old testament prophets were not born again number one number two they were not regenerated so because they were not born again and they were not regenerated by today's standard they were like unbelievers or natural men and the bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit neither can he know them so because they couldn't receive spiritual things they couldn't articulate their message so when jesus the message came he straightened the records how did he straighten the records next verse in that Luke 24 27 and beginning at Moses when you read the Bible and you see beginning at Moses he's talking about Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy the first five books of the Bible are called Moses because Moses wrote the books by a vision that he received so beginning from Genesis Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy remember he wants to cure them of foolishness because not long ago he called them fools and he has to do something about their foolishness in order for him to cure them of foolishness he took them through an intensive bible study from genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy and all the prophets all the prophets major prophets minor prophets he expounded that word expound is the first time you will see it in the bible from genesis nobody ever expounded until the message came so he expounded that word expounded is where theologians get their subject in bible school called humilitics or the principle of bible interpretation so the first interpreter of the bible was the message himself in this scripture he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself he didn't expound everything the only thing he expounded were the things that concern him because he is the message of the scriptures am i communicating if you're with me on the same chapter shout i hear you so he expounded unto them 
in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so we say the bible is a christocentric material that carries with it a christocentric message the word christocentric means a christ centered that the message of the scripture is not about you the message of the scripture is about christ you are not the focus of the scriptures the scriptures focuses on christ that's why he said the scriptures testify of me or i am the message of the scriptures that is to say anytime you read the bible and you don't see jesus you didn't read go back and read because when you read well you will see jesus everywhere because he is the message of the scriptures am i communicating tonight now follow me so the bible now says when he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself the next thing i want to quickly explain for the purpose of foundation where is the scriptures because when paul said to timothy all scripture there was no book of timothy so timothy is not the scripture when he said in john 5 39 search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life there was no book of john so john is not the scripture in matthew when jesus said you do err because you know not the scripture not the power of god there was no book of matthew so matthew is not the scripture in romans when paul said according to the scriptures of the prophets there was no book of romans so romans is not the scripture so if matthew and john is not the scripture it means the gospels are not the scripture if romans and timothy is not the scripture it means the epistles are not the scripture so where is the scripture jesus gave us an idea in mark chapter 4 verse 11 he said unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom so the scriptures are the mysteries of the kingdom next question where are the mysteries of the scriptures well the scriptures therefore is genesis to malachi genesis to malachi it is called the scriptures or it is called the mystery or it is called the old testament or it is called jesus concealed because in genesis to malachi you will never see j-e-s-u-s it does not exist but you will see him in action you will see him in types you will see him in shadows you will see him in prophecies you will see him in promises but you won't see him in substance because the old testament is types and shadows the old testament is prophecies and promises the old testament is a pointer to the new testament so listen carefully the old testament is the new testament concealed and the new testament is the old testament revealed follow me carefully follow me carefully so what i'm saying tonight is that the old testament therefore conceals christ how you won't see j-e-s-u-s -S. so what do you see you will see something like moses wants to call jesus but moses cannot call jesus moses tries but moses cannot he lacks articulation so what does moses say he says the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent he calls jesus seed why does he call jesus seed because the job of a seed is that when it falls to the ground it dies when it dies it germinates when it germinates its mass produces so moses was saying that when jesus come he will fall to the ground like a seed he will die like a seed he will rise like a seed he will germinate and must produce himself so that word seed is what we call typology old testament typology then moses tries to call jesus but moses cannot call jesus so you know what moses said moses says blood on the doorpost blood on the doorpost and when the angel of death shall see the blood he will pass over that blood was jesus because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved thereby. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are catching revelation, shout I hear you. 
Moses wants to say Jesus, but Moses cannot say Jesus. So you know what Moses said? Brazen serpent. Brazen serpent on a pole. Brazen serpent on a pole. And as the snakes were biting the children of Israel, Moses said, look up. If you can only look up, don't pray, don't fast, don't sing. Look. If you look, it doesn't matter how many snakes are biting you. They will not die. They will not kill you. So as the snakes are biting them, they are looking at the serpent. And as long as they are looking, they cannot die. When Jesus came in John chapter 3 verse 14, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Can somebody wave your hand, shout hallelujah. Sit down and listen. I'm laying foundation tonight. Oh, God punished the devil. Listen carefully. So, Noah tries to say Jesus, but Noah cannot say Jesus because of his status, his state. So what does Noah say? Ark. 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 What was that ark? It was Jesus in typology. That's why everybody that entered the ark, the rain didn't kill them. Those that didn't enter, died. If you believe in Jesus, you won't die. If you don't believe in Jesus, you are dead. So that ark was Jesus. In typology. So Genesis to Malachi is the scriptures or the mystery or Jesus concealed. Or the Old Testament. So the next question is, where is the New Testament? Well, first of all, in your Bible, before Matthew, they put New Testament. That's translator's privilege. Technically, the New Testament didn't start from Matthew. So Matthew is not New Testament. Mark is not New Testament. Luke is not New Testament. And John is not New Testament. Those are not New Testament books. They are still Old Testament books, but they contain transitional truths or they are historical accounts of the humanity of Christ or they are eyewitness accounts. What Matthew saw, what Luke saw, what Mark saw, what John saw, they wrote. That's why the same account, different emphasis, depending on where Matthew was standing and where Luke was standing and where John was standing to look at the event, then they recorded it. I don't know if I'm communicating. So how do we prove that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not New Testament books? Matthew 26 verse 28. Put it up for me. Matthew 26 verse 28. This was Jesus talking. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins that means the new testament is in his blood so until the blood was shed there was no new testament now follow me follow me i'm still traveling are you still in the house galatians chapter 4 verse 4 put it up for me galatians chapter 4 verse 4 galatians 4 4 he says but when the fullness of the time was come god sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law so when jesus was born he was born under the law so jesus lived under the law so matthew mark luke and john was a record of the life of christ on earth or a record of the incarnate christ or a record of the only begotten son matthew mark luke and john is a record of the only begotten son of god jesus of nazareth the anointed of god Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are accounts of the humanity of Christ. Why is the humanity so important? Because anyone that does not believe that Jesus came in flesh is Antichrist. So how do we know the Antichrist? Antichrist is known by what doctrine they preach. If the doctrine rejects that Jesus came in flesh, it is Antichrist. Because what gives validity to the work of redemption was that Jesus came in flesh. Why? Man sold out. Man must buy back. It was not God that will buy back. It is man. Because if God buys back, it will be injustice. So since man sold out, it will be man that will buy back. So since no man could buy back, God became a man. So he can buy man back. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life can i hear your amen like thunder are you catching revelation tonight so jesus was born under the law to redeem them 
or to buy back them that were under the law why did he buy back next verse you will love the next verse verse 5 of that galatians chapter 4 galatians chapter 4 verse 5 that we may receive put it up brother to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons if you are under the law you are not a son you are a servant for you to be a son you must be brought from under the law when you leave the law you become a son as long as you're under the law you're a servant that's why moses was a servant elijah was a servant elisha was a servant jeremiah was a servant all of them were servants but i'm not a servant no i'm not a servant as many as receive him to them gave him power to become where are the sons are there some sons of god the bible says now are we the sons of god behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god we are sons we are not servants where are the sons of god somebody shout now i am a son of god can i hear you shout abba father so matthew mark luke and john they are law or transitional truths or eyewitness account. All right? So where does the New Testament begin from? I'll get there in a few minutes. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15, to still buttress my fact. Hebrews 9 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death or by the vehicle of death or by the machinery of death. Yeah, that's the instrument he used. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. By the vehicle of death, he became the mediator of the new testament. How do we prove it a little further? Next verse. For where a testament is, there must of also of necessity be the death of the testator. Next verse. For a testament is only of force. Next verse next verse next verse next verse hebrews chapter 9 verse 17 for a testament is of force after men are dead so if jesus didn't die there's no new testament so the new testament is a product of his death and resurrection so that means matthew mark luke and john are not new testament because in matthew mark luke and john he has not died he died at the end of john he rose in acts that's why Acts chapter 1 says, after his resurrection. So where is the New Testament? Acts to Revelation. Are you still in the house? So the New Testament is Acts to Revelation. Or it is called the revelation of the mystery. Because the Old Testament is mystery. The New Testament is the revelation of the mystery. How do we prove that? Romans 16, 25. Put it up. God punished the devil. Romans 16 25 now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel I love brother Paul he called it my gospel he didn't call it our gospel he called it my own you know what he meant he was saying nobody taught me Barnabas didn't teach me Peter didn't teach me this thing I'm talking to you about I received it by revelation you see what you receive by revelation becomes your personal property and let me tell you one more thing revelation is higher than experience because you see peter ate with jesus walked with jesus rebuked jesus paul never saw jesus history told us paul never went through jerusalem paul never saw jesus with his eye yet it took paul to teach peter jesus it took paul to teach peter jesus because revelation is higher than experience see revelation corrects experience but experience cannot correct revelation am i teaching here so that's why paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may have the spirit of wisdom and revelation where in the knowledge in the knowledge that word knowledge is a greek word epignosis the word epignosis means accurate definite exact revealed knowledge the epignosis of christ the exact revealed accurate precise knowledge of christ not a trial and error knowledge 
but a definite knowledge not a doting about nothing but accurate knowledge that accurate knowledge comes by the opening of your eye it doesn't come by just by just by just singing it comes by a deliberate intentional study of god's word we are light shines and the scriptures come alive listen carefully the bible is not the word of god hold it hold it hold it you've been taught that the bible is the word of god i believe it but technically the bible is not the word of god because liars spoke in the bible satan spoke in the bible prostitutes spoke in the bible so the bible is not the word of god are we in the house but the bible contains the word of god why because the word of god is not paper and ink the word of god is a person how do we prove that john 1 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him in him in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot handle it verse 6 there was a man sent from god whose name was john verse 11 he came unto his own and his own received him not verse 12 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, verse 13, which were born not of flesh, nor of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. As you will shout grace, I command it to manifest in your life. So the Bible, therefore, contains the word of god why do we study the bible we study the bible to encounter the person to encounter the person of the word to encounter the person we don't study the bible for memorization i don't memorize the bible but i know the bible so when i start talking it flows out of me because i know it when you memorize you forget it when you need it when you know it, you remember it when you need it. That's the difference. How did I get to know the Bible? By constant fellowship. I read the Bible all the time. I study it all the time. I study it all the time. So it has become part of me. I don't study the Bible once a week. I don't even study it once a day. I study it all the time. Every time my body is itching, I want to find out what has God revealed in that book that is meant for my victory. I want to know. I don't want to live in this earth like a fool. I don't want to move around the place trying and arrowing and failing. No, no, no. I want to accurately hit it at the top of the nail and stand on the other side of success and smile to the dismay of my enemies. So you search the scriptures. You search the scriptures. Don't play with it because this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. With it you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Oh, he said, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereon to according to thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He says, he watcheth over his word to perform it. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. He says, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not come back void, but accomplish what I please. Forever, O oh God, thy word is settled in heaven. So get the word, get it into you. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Somebody shout, I hear. I hear. You hook up with that world and you rule your world. You hook up with that world and you rule your world. So, Genesis to Malachi, Old Testament mystery or Jesus concealed. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, historical accounts of the humanity of the Christ. Acts to Revelation, the revelation of scriptures or Jesus revealed or New Testament. Now, but Matthew, I mean, Genesis to Malachi is not the Old Testament. I said that to help us get here. So now let's get into details. Genesis to Malachi is not the Old Testament. So question, where is the Old Testament? 
Let the scriptures interpret themselves. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. Put it up for me. Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 8. For finding fault with them, tomorrow I will explain to you what that means. For finding fault with them, put it somewhere around your mind. He saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Next verse. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. So the Old Testament started in the day when he took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. It is called Exodus. So where is the Old Testament? Exodus to Malachi. So what is Genesis? Genesis is not the Old Testament. So what is Genesis? Matthew 19 verse 3. Jesus told us what Genesis is. Matthew 19 verse 3. Put it up for me, brother. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Next verse. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Next verse. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Next verse. Wherefore they are no more twin, but one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. Next verse. They say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Next verse. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So what is Genesis? Genesis is called the beginning. That's Genesis. So when the Bible says, in the beginning was the world, what he's saying is, in Genesis was the world. Because anywhere you see beginning, what he's referring to is Genesis. So Genesis is not Old Testament. Genesis is the beginning. Old Testament is Exodus to Malachi. Are we together here? Alright? So Genesis, beginning. Exodus to Malachi, Old Testament. Jesus concealed... Now let me prove a little more that Genesis is not Old Testament. Do you realize that when Jesus came, he was talking to the Jews and he said to them, you guys are bragging about Abraham. Abraham saw my days. Abraham saw my days. Huh. Huh. Where did Abraham see the days of Jesus? He saw Jesus two times. How? When he was coming back from the slaughter of the kings in Genesis chapter 14, he met a man called Melchizedek without a father, a mother, without beginning and end. That was Jesus in typology. That was the first time. What was the second time Abraham? Remember I say he saw my days, not my day, my days. So he saw him more than once. So what was the second time he saw Jesus? Oh, on Mount Moriah, when he took Isaac to go and kill. He brought Isaac to the mountain and wanted to put Isaac to kill. God said, Stop! What do you think? You think I want to kill Isaac? What benefit? Isaac is of no benefit to me. We are just acting. Remove Isaac. <laughs> Remove Isaac. There is a ram. Kill that ram. I was Isaac. You were Isaac. We were the ones to die. Jesus showed up. They took us out of the altar. Jesus died our deaths. <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. That was Jesus in typology. So when Abraham said, when Jesus said, Abraham saw my days, what Jesus was saying is that Genesis is the New Testament that started before the Old Testament. Did you just hear what I said? What Jesus was saying is, Genesis is the New Testament that started before the interruption of the Old Testament. So the Old Testament was an interruption of the New Testament. So the plan of God from the beginning was New Testament. God never planned for an Old Testament. God started because you see, God does not react. For God to react means he is not God. That means something took him by surprise. And if anything can take God by surprise, then he is not God. Because God has a quality or a character called omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. That means he knows everything everything nothing takes him by surprise so the old testament didn't surprise god it was a rude interruption of the new testament how do we know that the new testament is older than the old testament well it's very easy galatians chapter 3 verse 17 
put it up. He says, and follow carefully. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, the law was an addendum. It came after the covenant in Christ. So God's plan was the covenant in Christ. But when man rejected Christ, then Moses gave them law. It wasn't God that gave law. It was Moses. That's why it is called the law of Moses. That's why in Matthew 19, he said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, gave you the law. In the beginning, it was not so. That's not the plan. So the law is a rude interruption of the New Testament. And that is why when Jesus died, he took the law away and brought back the New Testament. Because that is God's original plan. Now tomorrow I'm going to be talking about the New Testament and the blessings of the New Testament. Stand with me and look at this. I want to pray. Just look at this. Peter said, thou art the Christ. Jesus said, blessed. You too, for knowing who I am, you are not Simon Bajona. You are Peter. Simon Bajona means a reed that is easily shaken. That means you're un in undependable, you're unreliable. Anything can move you. That was the name Peter was carrying. Not knowing that it was a wrong label. But the moment Peter saw Christ, in Christ, he saw himself. See, so you can never know yourself by looking at yourself. If you want to know who you are, look at Christ. When you see Christ, in Christ, the believer is revealed. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. See, until you see Jesus, you remain a victim of identity crisis. Until you see Jesus, insecurity will not leave you. The day you will be free from insecurity is the day you see Jesus. Because when you see him, in him, you see yourself. So that's why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. If you are blessed tonight, shout, I am blessed. <laughs>